Hi, um, yeah. Hi, Martin. Um, my name is Kevin Lee. I, I'm a co-host of an IT podcast for Korean people called uh, I'm a programmer, meaning I'm a programmer in Korean. And, and for sure, it's NAPDA. And uh, we, we did, um, it's, it's for sure, it's NAPDA. And uh, we had NAPDA award in uh, 2016 for best technology, language, and uh, speakers and conferences like that. And um, I actually nominated you as the um, best speaker of 2016 for uh, Scala Day's uh, keynote. So it was really great. I mean, I wasn't there, but I watched the YouTube video and uh, it was really great. And it was really honorable to see that the creator of the language explaining the future of the language and, and, and in very interesting way. And it was really informative and helpful. And so I nominated you. and. Uh, you won the you know uh, prize, so uh, we are still not sure what kind of prize actually uh, you know you can get, but we are still yeah in discussion. But yeah, so um, yeah, I'm, uh, basically I want to ask two things. One is uh, how how do you feel about that? I mean, you, you may feel awkward because you know all of a sudden some uh, Asian guy came and you won some you know award. But anyway, the first thing is that, and the second one is. Uh, is there any chance that we can invite you to our podcast for you know even five or ten minutes? If, you know, I, I know you are you are super busy, but if possible, just I mean not now but later sometime. You is it all right? Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. And so yeah, how do you feel about that? Like best speaker of 2016. <laughs> Okay. Um, and uh, you know, like you know, the, the Korean people like uh, says that I, I'm a, I'm an evangelist of Scala. They they just they always say that you know whatever sentence comes out of my mouth and with Scala also. But I'm having difficulty with uh, you know convincing them to learn Scala. So. And also, they are having problem with learning Scala, and and you know that, or convince others to use Scala. So, can you give them some kind of advice or something to say to them, like you know, learning Scala or like convince their company to use Scala? So, yeah. Well, um, to, to, to learn Scala, that that is Coursera courses. I don't know yep. whether you've seen that. That's right. I've done already. I don't know, yeah. They, have they already been translated with Korean subtitles? Ah, okay. It, it is, I'm not sure if it's translated in Korean, but yeah, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'll check that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, definitely that but, course. But if not, that can actually be a, a group effort. So one can upload essentially uh, subtitles uh, to Coursera. Okay. And they will in, in, integrate that. Okay. And that's generally yeah. a big help for for new learners uh, to do that. Yeah. Okay. So, Coursera courses, are, yep. I think, are a good way to learn, to learn Scala. Okay. In terms of adoption, uh, yeah, uh, I think if there's if there are enough people who who uh, like it and who are productive with it, uh, there will jobs follow. I mean, in, in many places in the world, there are, there are many more jobs than Scala programmers. That's right. So, uh, Scala programmers right now, I think, get, uh, is, is the highest paid uh, yes. profession. Yes. So, definitely. So, yeah. there's so many jobs, uh, and relatively speaking, fewer Scala programmers. Yeah. So, I mean, but it's true that in, in, in different markets, it's different. So, some markets are just not really, okay. not very large yet. Actually, Switzerland is not very large either, but it's coming. So, one just, okay. I guess. Another way to see it is it's probably a good investment in the future because yes. uh, if Scala is big in like uh, markets like uh, here in Australia and in Britain and in, uh, in the USA, that probably means there's a movement that it will go elsewhere as well. That's right. So yeah. If you get an early employment now, then you should, should have a good future. Yeah. And uh, I think that learning Scala is. Uh, good way to improve yourself right so like after I learned Scala what I found was uh, try to learn new languages like Swift and uh, Kotlin and other languages it's, it's, it was so easy I, I learned it on the same day they released the language because it, 
like you know, uh, there's so much similarity, and uh, uh, you know, like you know, it's, uh, the, all those concepts introduced in the new language already in Scala, in more advanced way, like you know. Yeah. You could say, say Scala is sort of the, the the daddy of those languages. A lot of the languages have taken a lot of these things. So, yeah. So that that also means that if you learn Scala, then it's probably quite transferable to let's say Swift or. or okay. Or okay. And um, um, Rust as well. I think there's quite a lot of similarities. Not as much as Swift and Scala, but there's quite a quite a bit of similarity between Rust and Scala. As well. Okay. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Rust, I was interested in, in, interested in Rust, but as soon as I found this Scala native. I tried it and it's really good. Like I, I did kind of you know really naive test, yeah. but it was about hundred times faster than JVM Scala. It was you know just uh -huh. I mean you know for so startup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. but you know JVM Scala it has a JVM warm up time and that sort so, of yeah. thing. But yeah. still like hundred times faster for that like for love test startup, yeah. was amazing. So um, I'm just wondering like you know how much uh, does the cent uh, Scala Center or the light band support Scala native? I mean, because you talked about uh, the future of Scala, so yeah. like you know, it's it's one of the projects that's supported by Scala Center. So okay. Some, uh, and um, it's um, I mean to tell the truth, it's it's pretty much like it starts it start it's starting out pretty much like Scala JS started out. So essentially, a single person that just wants to do it, and that essentially for for them it's like the thing that they want to do and they work every waking minute on this thing. Uh, okay. So that's for ScalaJS, it was Sebastian Duran, and for Native it's Dennis Shabali. And uh, so without without him it wouldn't exist for sure. Okay. But, uh, right now with the Scala Center, we, uh, he, he gets the necessary help to essentially become a little bit bigger. We did the same thing with Sebastian and ScalaJS that essentially we could uh, give uh, the university could could sponsor an engineer for a while and to help like with uh, tests and builds and all these things. And okay. that, that was very, very yeah. important. Yeah. yeah. So my my um, the previous company they also used Scala JS and uh -huh. yeah yeah we liked it. Yeah. yeah it was yeah. good. We used it even if it was in beta mode a uh, beta stage. So okay, yeah, yeah. It was good and okay. you know I'm not sure you know but it, 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 it was Fairfax. Fairfax is a company owns that uh, Sydney Morning Herald the newspaper, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we use the Scala and uh, Scala JS. Okay, yeah. great. Um, all right. So, we could do, uh, do they use it in production? Yes, yes, in production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we so, should we should make an effort because there's lots of uh, there's not a lot of uh, compiled knowledge about who's using it in production. So. Okay. Um, uh, they, I know of some companies, but they would be good to sort of collect stories. And for Scala JS, yeah. people were too busy and they didn't really do that, so people don't really know exactly who's using it. Okay, yeah, yeah. There we use Play, Spray, and then uh, the guy who started the Scala project, he implemented like, you know, uh, domain driven design framework he made, and uh -huh. then also he did the event sourcing with okay. Akka uh, uh, and also Akka persistence. Even Akka persistence was all, uh, also better, so yeah. So yeah, it was, it was, I think, huge success, and yeah, we got you know enough scalability, we impressed other people, and yeah, yeah. yeah it was good, yeah. And yeah, uh, I really like it. And I, I mean, for my personal use, I, I even use Scala as a script language. Uh -huh. So instead of doing shared scripting for so many things, I use Scala. Okay, yeah, so, so Scala it's really good. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and, and thank you for you know that um, kind of inventing this you know great language. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, probably uh, I cannot take any more time from you. So um, one last question is that. Uh, people who try to learn Scala, uh, they also try to learn functional programming. And uh, in my opinion, it's not really compulsory because that's the point where they get scared and you know, leave Scala because you know the old monad and you know functor and category theory things. So, uh, do you think it's really compulsory for them to learn functional programming to use Scala properly, or? Uh, what's your thoughts on uh, people doing that and get scared? <laughs> ah, uh, so, so there's a. 
I mean, it, the question is, what does the term even mean, right? So, I, I mean, the Coursera class that I was teaching says functional programming yeah, in, that's right. in Scala, but uh, in the whole course, you you actually don't hear the word Monad at all. That's right. And it, but it is functional programming, so, uh, so yeah. there's not yeah. a single assignment anywhere, it's functional yeah. programming. You, you even said that functional programming is uh, programming with functions, right? Yeah. 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 So I really like that. Yeah. So in that sense, I, I think uh, every Scala programmer, after a while, uh, a good Scala programmer knows this kind of functional programming. I think. Yeah. So if you would just use use it the way you use Java, that means lots of bars and assignments and while loops and things like that. Yeah. Nobody does that really. I mean, some people start out that way, but I would say they quickly move to a more functional idiom. That's right, yeah, that's right. But then what you say with the monads and, and functors and, and, and this whole terminology, then um, I, I actually disagree. So that, that, that's the same as functional programming. That's a particular style of doing functional programming, okay, yeah. which comes to us from Haskell mostly, where Haskell is the main language yeah. doing that. Um, but if you follow like another function, language like ML, then in ML you wouldn't talk about these things. Mm -hmm. Even Haskell, it sort of developed over the years, uh, that's just the current Haskell style, it wasn't always like that. So I think it's uh, one, I, I would actually say it's a better word to, to say it is categorical programming because it comes from category theory, this yeah. type of thing. So there are many brands of functional programming, so to say this is functional programming is sort of uh, narrowing it too much. There are many other ways to do functional programming. But if you want to do categorical programming, then yes, you can do that in Scala, and I think no, you don't have to do it. You okay. can do it, but you don't have to. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I guess that's, um, they don't have to do that, but like at some point, if they really need to do or they want, they can try, but it's not compulsory, and not compulsory. they don't need, really need to worry about exactly. that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, and, and Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, please come to our uh, podcast, and yeah, it will be really honor to okay, have you. Uh, <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, okay. thank you. Thanks. Thank you.